So here I'm looking at the F900 software for the FLS920. And we're going to be doing a quantum yield measurement. Right now I have two graphs combined. Uh, one is with uh, the uh, sample in the integrating sphere and one is without the sample or it's with the reference sample. Um, this region here in between 400 and 450 is the scattered light uh, with and without the sample and the difference in uh, the two curves here uh, represents essentially the absorption uh, by the sample. Whereas uh, in the region here between 450 and 650, uh, we're looking at um, where essentially the sample is fluorescent. Um, so the difference between these two peaks here represents uh, the emitted light. And the ratio between those two is uh, essentially the quantum yield. So let's try measurement here. Let's just quickly look at this curve on a logarithmic scale. So it's kind of shouting at me right now because we have some zero values here. Uh, and that's essentially just because uh, we have uh, zero photon counts in some areas, uh, but that's fine. Um, and so here you can see that uh, there's quite a substantial amount of fluorescence over in this region here. So let's now go ahead and do a quantum yield measurement. So we'll just here, click here, quantum yield. And let's select the uh, sample emission is from the sample scan, and the sample scatter is from the sample scan whereas the reference scatter is from the reference scan and the reference emission is from the reference scan. So let's now click next. And now it's asking me to select uh, the scatter range. So I'll just kind of click over here. That's about right. I'll click next. Now it's asking me to select the emission range. So I'll select this region here and I'll say next. And now it's telling me I have a quantum yield of about 93%. Okay, now let's take a look at the integrating sphere itself. Let's come over to the spectrometer. So within uh, the sample chamber here, I have the integrating sphere and I can just lift up uh, the top of the integrating sphere. And you can see here that I have a little region here where I would say input some powders. Okay, so that's where my powder would go. Uh, if I wanted to use a liquid sample, that's fine as well. I would just unscrew this screw here. Take this out and place this on here. And then put my screw back in. When it comes to uh, the top of the uh, integrating sphere here, I have the option to select between uh, powders and cuvettes because you can see that down in there, uh, the, where the position would be placed, either liquid or sample, is in a completely different spot. So uh, that right here will adjust the mirror appropriately. So right here it's directing into powders and right here it's directing it into the cuvette or the liquid. Okay. Uh, another little thing to perhaps point out is that we have uh, a lens for the excitation for good focusing, but we do not have a lens uh, for the emission side because we don't want to lose any signal uh, from reflections. When I'm not doing a quantum yield measurement, I can then remove this integrating sphere very easily okay, just by essentially taking this out. and then the sample chamber here is free to add in other sample holders. So that's a quick demonstration on how we do quantum yield measurements here at Edinburgh Instruments. Thanks very much.